Hello and welcome to Filling the Sink, a podcast from Catalan News. My name is Leah Bilaiva, and today we're talking about the ban on phones in Catalan schools. In late January of this year, the Catalan government introduced new regulations to the use of mobile phones in Catalan primary and secondary schools. Specifically, the Catalan Education Department announced it would ban the use of cell phones in primary schools and restrict them in secondary schools from the academic year of 2024 and 25. The news was noteworthy for two reasons. First, because of the ban itself, but also because it had started as a parent initiative just two months before, in November of 2023. On today's podcast, we'll be looking at the ban on cell phones in schools and the reasons behind it. I'm joined by Uriol Escude. Hello, hi Lea. Hi Uriol, long time no see. Yeah, indeed. So as I just said, new regulations came into place in January of this year. But Uriol, what do these regulations actually mean? Well, it looks like Catalan schools are going cell phone free next year. First, in primary schools, which go from 6 years old to 12 year olds, phones will be completely banned. And in secondary schools from 12 to 16 years old, phones will only be allowed in exceptional cases or for specific educational purposes. Okay, and, and what does that exactly mean? Exceptional cases or specific educational purposes. Yeah, it's a bit confusing. As a general rule, secondary schools will not allow the use of phones, so students can bring them to schools, but they must switch them off when they enter the school, and every school can decide how they enforce this. So some schools might decide that students have to keep them in their backpacks all the time, or others might decide that they have to leave them in a box in the entrance of the school, unless a teacher authorizes it for a specific educational purpose. Yeah, so that could be, for example, taking photos of objects for a class exactly. or a project or something like yeah, that. Exactly. But even in playground, they won't be allowed to use them. So as a general rule, banned. Okay, so those are the new regulations. But how were the regulations before these came into place? Before each school decided independently, a survey from last year found that 52% of Catalan schools, both primary and secondary, had some kind of regulation on the use of phones. But from these, 14% completely banned phones, so you could not even bring them. These were most primary schools. And then 23% banned its use. So we can say that students, especially in secondary school, were pretty much able to use phones everywhere in Catalonia. And now they won't be able to. Okay, so with these new regulations, they're trying to, well, standardize everything, right? Yeah. But let me ask you, Uriol, what are the actual figures behind children's use of cell phones? In Spain, by the age of 12, 7 in 10 kids have a phone. That's all you need to know. <laughs> wow. Okay, so by 12 years old... Seven in ten children, they have a mobile phone. And three years later, when they're 15, 95% have one. Wow, okay, so almost all kids have a cell phone by the age of 14 or 15. Okay, so these figures are really, really staggering, but I'm not the only one who thinks so. Actually, the regulation that we're talking about, they became a reality after a group of parents got together and created a WhatsApp group, which then grew even bigger over the course of a weekend. Right, Uriol? Yeah, it all started here in Barcelona. That was in Poblano uh, neighborhood. And a group of parents banded together because they said the only reason they were giving phones to their children was because everyone had one. So they decided to join forces and create a WhatsApp group for that school which then spread everywhere in Barcelona, in Catalonia, and now it's spread all over Spain. And this group is called Adolescencia Lliure de Móviles. And you talk to Yuna Porta, one of the spokespersons of the group. So let's hear what she said. In a highly polarized world, it's rare to find initiatives that unite citizens across the board. However, the platform Adolescencia Lliure de Móvil, a phone-free adolescence, stands out as one of the exceptions. In September last year, a group of parents in Barcelona banded together as their children transitioned from primary to secondary school. They were feeling the pressure that, you know, that they had to hand um, a smartphone 
to their children at the age of 12. And they, they felt that the children were not ready to handle this kind of uh, device. Yeah, I mean, in one month, they reached the maximum amount for a WhatsApp group, which is 1,025 people. I mean, that's amazing, you know, because there, there were families that didn't know each other. So that, that spread very quickly, which shows there was a concern already. While a thousand people can help, it takes more to make a real difference. And the turning point came on November 3rd, when the initiative made headlines. Personally, I saw the news, and the same day I saw the news, I created a WhatsApp group in Girona. And it was amazing because in less than 24 hours, the group I've created for Girona and surrounding and, and all the area, it actually reached the maximum amount of members. But I had to answer all these messages of all these people saying, we cannot you know, go in the group, what do we do? I have all these parents in my school that want to get in. So we decided uh, that we will create a, a Telegram group. Yuna and many other parents voiced the concern shared by many. The Telegram group has now more than 10,000 users and the initiative has spread across Spain. It was just amazing. I mean, it, it was it was insane. This shows that the worry was there, the concern was there, but the families were worrying alone. They were not talking to each other about this. For parents who are hesitating or who have already given their children a phone and feel they can't go back, Luna offers some thoughts from experts. When I gave you the phone, I thought it was good for you. I thought it will help you, uh, you know, uh, learn new things. I hope it will entertain you. Uh, I had thought it was a good tool for you. And I thought, of course, it was not dangerous for you. I didn't think I was giving you a weapon. But now I've, I've come to realize that actually this is not good for you. Luna quotes Mark Basip, an expert in cell phone addiction, and offers another interesting idea. This one from Francisco Villar, a psychologist and specialist in suicidal behavior. When we give the smartphone to our child, we think we're giving access to our kid, you know, we are giving access to the whole world. So our son has access to the best things of the world. But we are forgetting that what we are doing is giving access to, to the world so the world can access our son. Thanks to Yuna Porta for speaking with us. So Yuna talked about how vulnerable children they can be when they're using a phone. And can you tell me a little bit more, Uriol, about the risks that are related to children using smartphones? So one of the main concerns of parents is not the phone itself, but social media. But when we give access to a phone, we're giving them access to social media, right? And we can say that most of the things they do on their phones is being on social media. Right. And social media, parents say, increases the risk of depression, anxiety, insomnia, cyberbullying. And they are worried. They say it can also trigger unrealistic beauty and happiness standards, eating disorders. And there is data that confirms that. There's a number of studies that show the link between social media and mental health problems. Experts also point out that at this age, the brain is still immature and does not have the ability to self-regulate against the constant stimuli generated by social media. Because, you know, social media has these powerful algorithms that hijack their attention and we don't even have the power to... Yeah, I was about to say that even we have difficulty regulating our use of social media. So just imagine how children must feel. They they haven't learned how to do that yet. Absolutely. So this means that what the parents are trying to do is, well, to take away the devices that allow their children to access social media, which is the real problem. Yeah, they're not against it, but they're against using it so early. There are a number of studies that say that the potential risks associated with social media, such as poor mental health, uh, sexting, cyberbullying, are greater if they start to use them between the ages of 10 and 14, compared to starting using them when they're 18. So most of them, they're not ready yet. It's too early for them to start having access to social media. So what they want to do, parents, basically, is delay it. Mm -hmm. And one of its problems is peer pressure, right? Because everyone in class has one, so I have to give them one as well. Yeah, you don't want your child to be the odd one out. The only right? one. But there is no scientific evidence confirming at what age a phone can be used without risks. Of course, there's evidence that an early risk is not good, but there's no clear 
age where children can start using phone safely because even you and I can have potential mental health problems, right? So mm -hmm. we, we, we can argue that there's no safe age of when using social media. Yeah, and it's also just such a new concept that scientists, they haven't yet reached any conclusions, right? And we have plenty of reasons to be worried about social media. Meta now, the company of Facebook and Instagram, is being sued uh, by dozens of states in the US over claims that its social media platforms are intentionally addicting young people and harming their mental health. We saw Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO, being grilled by US senators, uh, saying that he had blood in his hands. So yeah, that was quite uh, unprecedented, I would say. And, and I don't know if you knew this, but even Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, the big CEOs of Apple and Microsoft, raised their kids with limited tech. So for example, Steve Jobs didn't allow uh, his kids to use the iPad that he created. <laughs> well, if Steve Jobs didn't allow his own kids to use the products that he had created, well, maybe we who use these products, well, we should be a little hesitant. Exactly. Uh, they, they must surely know something we don't. Yeah, and this whole uh, conversation that we're having right now, it reminds me a little bit about the discussion that took place a long time ago about TVs, right? That we would always hear that TV is bad for you, TV is bad for you, but we ended up watching TV and we still do. So is it really a big problem? Yeah, some people might think that. The difference between TV and phones is completely different. The TV is a passive screen and the phones are active screens. So they have these dynamic processes that generate a lot of dopamine. The TikTok algorithm, for example, is designed to seek compulsive consumption by generating that dopamine. And that's why kids get trapped and find it very difficult to, to get away from screens. All right, I see. So the need for regulations, well, w one can argue, is, is in fact real. And I understand that UNESCO and the OECD, they have some recommendations regarding the use of phones, right? Yeah, and they have completely opposite recommendations. The UNESCO last year released a report recommending banning cell phones in classrooms because the report said it distracted students and reduced performance. But on the other hand, the OECD does not advocate for prohibition and suggests that moderate use of cell phones and similar devices like tablets, iPads, improve student learning. So we have these two completely opposite visions and Catalonia is following the UNESCO in this sense. All right. And a little later on, we will talk a little bit more about what other countries are doing about this mobile problem. And in the meantime, the question remains, how do we take these phones back now that we have already given them to the children? Uriol, you talked to José Ramón Uvieto, who is a clinical psychologist, about exactly this. So let's hear what he said. The ban on phones in Catalan schools has been well received by parents, teachers and experts. But is it enough to get young people to disconnect? Education that relies solely on bans has little future. The ban on cell phones is a necessary element in a much broader plan. I believe that we need to implement a regulatory policy, and within that policy there are many things to do. One is a ban, which means, for example, digital disconnection spaces, free of mobiles. For example, classrooms and playgrounds in school should be cell phone free spaces, okay? But at home, bedtime should also be a mobile free time. Children should not go to bed with their phones. And family meals too. Creating cell phone free zones and reducing their use is not the only way to solve the problem. We need to educate children on how to use them. We have to teach them because they're not born knowing. For example, TikTok's algorithm always plays the same videos. There's no diversity. So digital literacy is a task that parents, society in general, and the education system has to take on. We have to teach them how to use these devices better. 
For example, we should teach them that ethical principles such as respect apply on the street and apply online as well. You don't insult someone on the street because you don't like the way they dress, so you shouldn't do that on Instagram or Twitter either. In other words, ethical principles that apply to the real world should also apply to the virtual world. We also need to teach them how to protect their privacy, not to share their geolocation, not to post pictures indiscriminately, not to let anyone into their account. But if we want them to spend less time online, we have to do the same. Leading by example is the best way to disconnect ourselves and reconnect with children. We need to be present with them in the real world, show them that there is life beyond the screens, but show it to them with our presence. Presence and attention are fundamental because it gives them satisfaction and authenticity that the virtual world will never be able to provide. And we must understand that the digital world should always be a complement to reality, never a replacement. Of course there will be families who say they cannot be there because they are working and busy and screens are the only things that entertain their children. Well, that's what public policies are for. But banning alone will not solve this problem. We need collective action. Thanks to José Ramón Vieto for speaking with us. For those interested in the topic and who speak Spanish, José Ramón just published the book Adictos o Amantes about children's and teenagers' digital mental health. So the discussion about what to do with smartphones and children, I think, is unlikely to go anywhere. And while we in Catalonia are trying to figure out what to do by regulating it, we can also look at what other countries are doing. So, uh, Uriol, what are other countries in the EU trying to do to solve this issue? So it seems like we're not the only ones concerned, and these worries of parents and experts and teachers have spread all over Europe. We're not at the forefront. The Netherlands, for example, recently banned the use of phones in schools, but Italy and France have been doing so for a few years. Italy implemented these measures in 2022 because they said that phones were a distraction for students and it was a lack of respect for teachers. Wow. France did so in 2018 in primary and secondary schools, with exceptions for educational or medical purposes, and that will probably ring a bell because it's exactly what we're going to do here now. The French government said that these devices hindered listening and concentration for learning and caused conflicts. One year later, in 2019, after the measure, the minister, the French Minister of Education said the measure was a success, that reading time increased, that pooling was reduced, and that there were more peaceful classroom environments all over the country. Wow, well, that sounds like great news. And do you think, Uriol, that we can expect these prohibitions and these regulations to expand beyond just classrooms? I don't know. I wish I had a crystal ball. I don't know. There's still a few countries that are behind us. So Portugal, Germany, Belgium, they are exactly where we were before. But there are different measures in Europe that go even one step further. Yeah, I saw that in France, they took it to another level, right? Absolutely. This is in Saint-Port. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. <laughs> It's in the south of Paris. And there in that French town, citizens voted in a referendum and they decided to restrict the use of phones, to ban it, while people was walking in the street or sitting on a bench or in shops, cafes, and restaurants. It's prohibited. Okay, so there's a small town south of Paris where if you really don't like phones, you can go and try a mobile-free life because you can't sit on a bench with your phone. Yeah, but there's a catch. Oh. There are no sanctions for non-compliance, and it's not really enforced yet. <laughs> I see. <laughs> There's a couple more towns in Ireland which are doing similar things. Greystones have completely banned letting children under 12 years old to have a phone. And there are other towns in Catalonia which are doing similar things. 
in Cabrils, a uh, town near Barcelona, there's an initiative by parents because they say the only reason they give phones to their children is to communicate with them when they are in public transportation, for example, going to school or coming back from it. So they have asked local businesses to allow children to use their phones when they need to. So if they have a problem, they know they'll have a phone nearby. Okay, and I suppose that also creates more a sense of a community, right? In the, in the town that Absolutely. you can uh, you get to know each other and you get to connect a little bit. And help each other out. And help each other out. And now it's time for our Catalan phrase of the week. What is it this week, Uriol? Bufa y fe ampollas. Bufa y fe ampollas. So it means literally to blow and make bottles. Yes, it means that something's very easy to achieve. So when you achieve something that's very easy, you can say that it was to blow and make bottles. And it comes from the profession of glass blowing. So do you know these images of this technique of making glass by blowing? Honestly, I've always wanted to try. It comes from Syria originally. And a, the easiest shape to make is a bottle. Ah, I see. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, something that's uh, that's easily done. Yes, absolutely. All right, so while it hasn't been so easy to figure out a solution to this problem with phones and what the consequences are, it has been pretty bufa y fe ampollas gathering a group of parents yeah. around this cause, right? There's been very few issues that have achieved this much consensus among citizens. So that was Bufai Femboyas, not the regulation. It really was. Well, incredible, incredible work by the parents. And I hope the regulations will solve the problems they intend on solving. And protect the children. And protect the children. That's all we have time for today. So thanks for listening. Please do subscribe to Filling the Sink wherever you get your podcast if you haven't already. Thanks again to Yuna Porta and José Ramón Uvieto for speaking with us. Thanks to you, Uriol. Thank you, Lea. And we'll be back again next week with another episode of Filling the Sink. On behalf of the team here at Catalan News, I'm Lea Bilaiva, wishing you a great weekend. Fin sabia y adeu. Adiós.